What is our legacy? What do we leave behind after we're gone? During the pandemic, many of us pondered these sorts of questions. Now more and more people are writing their stories, passing on legacy, legacies in the form of memoirs. As Jeffrey Brown tells us, these books, once reserved for the famous, are now more accessible than ever. Deborah Rugg felt sure she had a story to tell. Her work on pandemics for the United Nations and the Centers for Disease Control had taken her around the world over four decades. I realized, like uh, others have said and, and Kierkegaard said, you must live life going forward, but you really can only understand it looking backwards. Who did you have in mind as readers? My primary audience, I'd have to say, were the young women that I was meeting in my career who so identified with the struggles and the, uh, the trials and uh, I'd been through, because I think young women uh, often struggle to balance family, and I had two daughters, and career, and, and self-confidence, and so I wanted, to, I wanted to share my lessons. And the 69-year-old semi-retiree also had her own family in mind, hoping to preserve that legacy as well. She often walked the paths near her home outside San Francisco, both for inspiration and when writer's block struck. I've written hundreds of scientific articles and government reports for the UN or the CDC, and you always have to prove and have evidence for everything you write. So it was really hard for me to, to do creative nonfiction, to write this way. I was second guessing, saying, what's my, what's my evidence for this? Is this a value? Am I advancing knowledge in some way? In the end, Rugg turned to the company's story terrace to get her book across the finish line. I'd already written a memoir. It was too long. They could help me polish how to cut it in half, how to make it more um, uh, readable. And then more importantly for me, I wanted to get it done. I wanted a hard copy book, you know. I wanted this book in my hands. We want to make it easy to collaborate with your writer and your editor. Rutger Bruning came up with the idea for Story Terrace nearly a decade ago for a very personal reason. My grandfather used to tell me lots of stories about the Second World War, where he set up a small resistance group in the Netherlands. But after he passed away, those stories faded much quicker than I expected. So ever since that happened, I've been thinking around why we lose the stories of the people we care about. Story Terrace is just one in a proliferation of memoir writing services, now available in a wide spectrum of formats and price points. From full ghost writing costing upwards of $30,000 to editorial help. Everyone has a story worth sharing. To services like StoryWorth, which for $100 emails prompt questions once a week for a year. People realize that this is one gift they can give to their family that nobody else can give. James Haggerty knows a thing or two about telling people stories. He's an obituary writer for the Wall Street Journal. I did a story about a woman who lived 115, uh, and she uh, could tell me more about Warren G. Harding than she could about Donald Trump. She had a fascinating story to tell. She, nobody had ever heard of her, but when I wrote her obituary, it was one of the most popular things I'd ever written, which kind of underlined for me that you don't have to be famous to have a good story to tell. And technology is helping open the door to a much wider group of people. These apps uh, make it easier for a lot of people to do what would be kind of a daunting task if you had to sit down with a, an old-fashioned typewriter or something and, and think up everything on your own. Gail Tricosta of Lifetime Memoirs, another writing service, says the interviewers they hire are integral to the writing process, helping unlock stories. Not everyone is a natural storyteller. Not everyone, as they're telling their story, recognizes the parts of that story that might be very interesting. Not everyone is thinking in terms of how will this story make sense 100 years from now? What part is missing? So that interviewer needs to be very tuned in with what will make that story. I believe listening to people's stories is a way to intertwine your life with others and, and get that human connection. You proposed to Catherine? Manisha Maksud is one of the company's many interviewers. I really believe that it doesn't matter where you come from or what kind of background you have. There's a story and someone can learn from it and someone can be inspired from it and you have something to share. My hope in writing this book is that you will gain insights from my successes and failures and see that one woman truly can make a difference in this world, and so can you. 
In many of the places I worked throughout my career, I was also the only woman or one of just a few. My position as a relative outsider sometimes taught me to be creative and strategic. I gained the wisdom to realize when I'd reached a dead end, which enabled me to back away and head in a different, more fruitful direction. Most of all, I learned that a motivated individual could make a lasting impact in this world. It took her four years, but Deborah Rugg finally finished and published her memoir, Navigating Change, in 2022. She dedicated it to her daughters and grandsons. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Jeffrey Brown.